my biggest and longest stretch of a tool haul ever. Let's go check it out. Nuts and bolts with Tony here, guys, and welcome to my channel. Today, I have an exciting tool haul. Some of these tools you've seen in my Tones Tools Tuesday. However, it's been a very weird seven months with being out of work for four months and getting tools before and during and after. So let's just get into it. All right, so the first tool is from SunX Tools. I shared this in my, in my, uh, in my Tones Tools Tuesday, and I'm going to share it now. I love these, and if you're doing dash work, you want this. So this is a tool set from SunX Tools, and these are the magnetic nut setters. So I can't tell you how beneficial these are right here when you got your screw gun. You got your screw gun and you're under a dash and you've got a socket on there with a seven mil and you're sitting there and you're trying to hold the light and get under there and it keeps falling off. Can't tell you how many times I've done that. So pop this out, pop your nut setter in there. A lot of times the dash, everything is gonna be a seven mil. Works great and they're color coded. I love it, SunX Tools, lifetime warranty on all their hand tools. And let's see, now this is really cool. Now, this is gonna be my Tones Tools Tuesday very soon. So, you got an AC compressor that doesn't work, a blower motor, doesn't matter. You're gonna get your power probe out and you're gonna go in and you're gonna check for power and you're gonna turn it on and you're gonna go, okay, cool, I got 13.4 volts, whatever. And you're gonna go to your ground side and go, okay, I got, you know, zero volts. I got 0.04 volts, whatever. Okay, cool, I got power and ground. Now, <coughs> Just because you have power and ground doesn't mean that, that the wiring is, is okay. It's sent power and ground. If you have got a strand of wire and there's 20 wires in that, in that one wire, there's 20 wires all wound together. And if there's one spot where 19 of those wires are broken, they're not touching, and you have one wire that's connected and you check for power at the blower motor, fuel pump, doesn't matter, AC compressor clutch, you're going to have your system voltage because that one wire will read the voltage. If you do an ohm test, disconnect it, check it. It's gonna read low ohms because it's still connected. However, it cannot carry the current to actually turn on the component. So you check the blower motor, you check the AC compressor, and you've got power, you've got ground, it needs an AC compressor, a fuel pump, cooling fan, blower motor, and you put it in, it doesn't work. And you're like, I don't understand. I don't check it again, I got power, I got ground. How can you combat that? Well, I will tell you how. Check Engine Chuck is a mechanic on TikTok that has been helping people for a very long time, and he makes videos showing you his processes of diagnostics. And he's really good. And he's really good with electrical. So, he came up with this, called a Check Engine Chuck load cage. I just got this within this week, and I actually just used it the other day. So, all it is, is you got a connection here, and this turns and it pops out and there is a headlight bulb in here, all right? So if you ever follow a flow chart, look at a di Identifix article, diagnostics, it doesn't matter. When you're checking, it's going to check, tell you to get a headlight bulb and connect it and see if it lights. Now, why would you do that? Well, I told you, if you have a wire and all the wires are broken except for one, then current cannot flow. It cannot light the light bulb, but it will give you power on the other end. So I just recently used this. I had a sprinter that the AC wasn't working. Scan tool says compressor's on. It's got a clutchless system, you can't see it, but it still has power to the compressor. So I hooked up to the compressor on the power and the ground side and hooked up the leads. I turned on the compressor and guess what? The light bulb lit bright. So I knew not only did it have power, it had ground and the wiring could carry current so the wiring was good so i did all that in one step back probe back probe hook this up ac on lights the light bulb i got power ground current can flow it needs a compressor super easy you can get this um uh, I'll, I'll try to put a link down below uh to his uh tiktok store or whatever um but yeah i think it's like 60 bucks i think and uh 
And it's cool because the headlight, the, 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 the bulb can turn out and you can replace the bulb. And the, the cage is like, um, it's like plastic. It's made uh, 3D printing. So guess what? It's got enough room around the bulb where the cage is not going to get hot. It's not going to melt. So you can just leave it, keep checking it. You don't have to worry about burning yourself, setting anything on fire. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. The next thing I got now, this is just a, this is just a, um, just something I got for work. So I got this, this from the TikTok shop. And all it is is a big clock. So I work in a big, big shop. And I have two bays. And a lot of times I'm working away from my box or not right at my cart. So I have no idea what time it is. So I wanted this clock right here. This clock, it shows the date. It shows, I mean, the, the, the time. Shows the day of the week. I just plugged it in so it's not correct. Uh, it shows the date and it shows the temperature outside. So I love that. It's awesome because not only do I know how hot it is, I know what the date is when I'm doing ROs or if I'm just thinking about whatever. But most importantly, I can see this from well beyond my second bay and I know what time it is. So, and that's really important sometimes when I'm, you know, doing AC or, you know, something like that or when I just want to know when it's lunchtime. So that's awesome. All right. So the next tool is, and I shared this while I was out. This is the Capri Tools, and this is their brand new, well, it's not quite brand new anymore, their Palm Ratchet, their Palm Impact Wrench. So here's the Palm Impact Wrench. You got your lever here, and you're going to hold it in your hand. Now, this is very similar to the Flex Head Impact. It, it, the head is almost the same size. Uh, you just don't have the handle. But you can totally get this into places that you couldn't get it into, uh, that you couldn't get into. So this is... 405 foot pounds. So Capri tools, they make great tools. You're not going to get better tools uh, for the price than you are from Capri and Senex tools, carbine tools, things like that. You're just not. I've been doing this for a long time and a lot of my tools were all from the trucks and they're expensive. So the next tool is really cool and it's all around. Now this is the new Senex tools blowgun kit. Now, what's really cool about this is you can have your big fat air nozzle on there just to move air, or maybe you're blowing out a radiator and you want to do a lot of, you know, flow a lot of air. But then they've got all these different attachments. So they've got this little precision one right here. So if you're doing uh, uh, one, one way it's beneficial is if you're doing uh, interior work and maybe you're a detailer, you can use this and you can get in really small fine areas and you can blow it out maybe get in there with just like a little needle and just get the stuff and with this precision tip right here and it's adjustable so you can adjust uh the pressure and then then it, obviously it's got uh two longer nozzles so i love that and then it comes with a fitting okay i talked about this before i don't use those fittings so yeah so this is really cool i love it it's got a metal body a lot of air guns, they have a plastic body, so it's they're not uh, very sturdy. The next tool is a friend of mine on Instagram, uh, Matty Too Nice, something like that. Uh, he was a he's a diesel mechanic, and um, I always work on you know I work on the diesels and I work on six liters. But one of the things that on a six liter is on the high pressure oil rail, it's like big and it's got four nipples that go into the injector. So you've got your injectors and it's got no ring and you've got this nipple cup and that they move because as you put the rail on, the, the nipples have to move. They're not part of the rail. Well, there's no ring in there that can fail or you can sell it as preventative maintenance when the rails come off. So I bought this and this is from Swag Performance and Off-Road right there. So this is a nipple cup socket and it's an external socket. So this goes inside to release it. And then you take your nipple cup out, replace your O-ring. So pretty cool right there. Happy to have that. I can't believe I was a diesel mechanic for so long and I did not have that. So next up is a flashlight. Obviously, I showed you guys this. This is my Streamlight. Uh, I, I had a flashlight from another company and they sent it to me a long time ago. I used it. And I, you know, I liked it. it. was a great flashlight. And then I had, then one failed. 
And then I sent it back. And then I said, hey, it's not working. Do you want me to send it back? Whatever. So they sent me a new flashlight. And then time went on and the same thing. And sometimes the flashlights were still brand new. Never been dropped at all. And they just didn't work. I tried taking them apart and it wouldn't come apart. I mean, there was nothing wrong with them when I took them apart. And over the course of a couple years and having to warranty them multiple times, I offered to send them back every time. And they kept telling me no. I would send videos of the problem. And then finally they said, hey, we don't know what you're doing with your flashlights, but we can't warranty it anymore. And uh, so anyways, I don't use that flashlight anymore and I don't promote that company. But anyways, so this is a company that I do promote because I bought this flashlight and it's awesome. And Streamlight, I've been using Streamlight for a long time. My very first purchase on a tool truck was a Streamlight flashlight. This was back when they had halogen bulbs. And yeah, and then we got like LED kits to put on the front and then the LED would pop off. And but anyways, this is a Stryon. Uh, this is the Stryon 2020. I love it. I had to get a new holster for my belt because this is smaller. Um, it's it's kind of weird because it's so small. So pushing the button is is still new to me. It's still weird. But the flashlight works great. It's bright. You can also, and I didn't know this until recently, but you can also change the how bright it is. One day I turned it on and it wasn't very bright. I'm like, what's going on with this thing? And I put on the charger and I'm checking it and I'm like, it's charged. And then I discovered that it has this little lever here. And uh, even when I talked about this in my Tones Tools, I didn't show that little lever there because I didn't know about it. But um, yeah, that works great. I love it. It's awesome. Next up, Capri Tools. So now I showed this before and I'm going to tell you what, this, this, this little torque wrench right here. This is their quarter drive mini torque wrench. Now this thing goes up. I don't have the box. This thing goes up to 140 inch pounds. Now there's a bunch of stuff in the case. I don't use them. I'll, I'll show you. I already have all that stuff. But what I love about this torque wrench is that most torque wrenches, they're silver and, or they're like, like a chrome type of, and then like the writing on them is like a yellow or white and it's really hard to see, especially in a shop environment. And with LED flashlights, they're even harder. I find it easier to go out in the sun and read them. But anyways, that's a pain in the butt. What I really like about this, this torque wrench is that the writing is in... See how bold that is? Because the writing is in white the and the torque wrench is black. And this thing is tiny. This thing is like not even bigger than the palm of my hand. Look at that. So... The benefit, why would you want a torque wrench like this? Well, there are many times that you are doing valve covers on V6 engines or plenums, and you just can't get the swing of a torque wrench. So me, I don't like to tighten down plastic stuff without a torque wrench because I either under torque it or over torque it because I just it's just hard. Um, and so I prefer a torque wrench. And I also like to do the job one time. Do it one time, torque it, no problem. So anyways, so I love this little knob on the end to twist it. And uh, obviously we got the blue on there for Capri. And it also has, so you're in a, tor you're in a tight place, got a socket on there. Guess what's not going to happen? The socket is not going to fall off because it's got a little button on there for releasing the socket. Now these are good and bad. They're good. You don't lose your socket. They're bad because not everything I have has a button. And so when I have something that has the button, I'm trying to yank the socket off. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, yeah. Um. But it comes with an extension and it comes with a socket for all these different bits. Um, I keep it in the case, obviously, because it's a torque wrench. I wanted it to stay calibrated. Uh, but, yeah. Pre-tools, this torque wrench is awesome. The next thing is, and I just got this in the last couple weeks. And I just used it yesterday for the first time. Um, so, this is, so, I have been buried in diesels. And if you're a mechanic, you'll understand this. I have had one truck that had a, a, a 6.4 that had an oil, temp, oil level too high. Sets during a regen. So I've got that truck. I've got another truck with an EGR problem. I've got another truck with a um, it, uh, the, the, dirt, the Dirty Max I'm working on that had an impacted air filter. Then it had a broken flex pipe. 
and then it wouldn't it wouldn't get out of regen and or wouldn't get out of limp mode and it wouldn't regen and it was setting for a bad cat. Well, I got my top done out there with that running a regen on that truck, which is running for like an hour. And I did this like three times before I finally got through the flow chart to that it needs cat. Anyways, I got my top down out there. I'm scoping that. And I got another scan tool on the other truck and I'm looking at the high oil temp. And then I got a Prius that's a no start and I got to scan it. Well, I don't have any, you know, I'm out of scanners. The shop has one snap on scanner, one autel scanner, and then we have a top down in the back. And then we have a bunch of factory scan tools. But as far as regular scan tools, it's hard because one guy in the back, the top Don's there. He uses that all the time. That's kind of like his scan tool, but we can all use it. Then we've got the auto and the snap-on. Everyone obviously prefers the snap-on. Every time you go to use it, somebody's got it. And so it's a real pain in the butt. And so sometimes all I need to do is check for codes uh, so I know a direction. And so I got this actually on the TikTok shop. This is the launch um, 529. It's a Sonobi D scanner. So all this is is it's a, a launch-based uh, code reader. But it's pretty cool because this one, it obviously they all check monitors, they check codes, they clear codes. But what I like about this one is you can graph data. So you can go, my son had a thermostat. Um, he had a check engine light nine o'clock, like two weeks ago, on like a Friday night check engine light. It's like, I'm coming over, scan my car. I was like, all right, so he comes over, we scan it, and it's a thermostat code. All right, well... So on the way, on the one, when we got done, we needed to look at the coolant temp to watch it rise. Well, what's cool about this is you can go in, you can select coolant temp, hit graph, and then you can watch the coolant temp rise or not rise. If you're diagnosing it, you can see it not rise and it stays at 125 degrees and you know the thermostat stuck open. Whatever you need to do. It'll scope, clear codes, do all that stuff. So pretty cool. Uh, I think this is like 40 bucks. So not super expensive. Uh, but it's actually really cool. It's really quick. I like that. The next thing I bought is just something super simple. I actually bought this on Amazon. This is just a set of brushes. Uh, I don't know, three different kinds of brushes, nylon, steel, and maybe brass. Um, I actually use these mostly for cleaning, uh, uh, exhaust on diesels. Like when I pull a cat off and I'm about to replace it, I'll take this and I'll uh, brush out all the soot and exhaust around the about the connections. A, a six liter, I'm doing it on the Y pipe, on the down pipe, um, you know, and then on the turbo too. So I mostly use that, and I think I mostly use this one. I've only had it for a few weeks, but I like that. It works good. Uh, next up is now I've had this for a while. I actually got this while I was out on um, disability uh, with my foot and. So JNC, Jump and Carry, you guys will know this. So here's the, I was looking for the, the logo name. Um, anyways, oh, so Jump and Carry right there. So you'll know that because in your shop, I guarantee you that you've got a jump pack on the, in the shop. Big old fat jump pack that jumps everything. And um, it's a JNC. It's a Jump and Carry. Uh, it's made by Chlor Automotive. Um, so this is a new, so I used to have one for diesels. And it was an older one. They were updating it. And so this is the updated one. This is a 550 start assist amps. So this actually works really good. It's got, uh, it's got long leads. Okay. All you companies out there that make jump packs. All of you guys. You guys need to take note on this. I mean, look at that. Look at how long that is. This is long. So I don't understand why these jump pack companies, Top Don, I have a Top Don, I love it. It works great. It jumps everything. It is a beast. However, the leads are so short that you can, on a sprinter, if you've got a three liter sprinter and on the driver's side of the air box, you pull the red thing back and put your positive on there, it can't even reach the, the ground point on the fender. So you have to go down to the engine and try to find the ground. So that's a pain in the butt. Jump pack works great. The leads are like this long. So don't make jump packs with little tiny leads. This one, this works on diesels. This works on everything. Um, what I like about this, though, is not only when you turn it on, it's got a boost button. So you're going to push that down. You're going to get maximum boost. So if you've got a dead battery, this is going to start it. Um, and it also has like, um, it also has protection. 
for if you um, if you hook it up the wrong way. It's got um, reverse polarity protection and stuff like that, which most jump packs nowadays have reverse polarity protection. However, that thing has like two foot leads, so I don't know why these companies keep making tiny leads. Uh, the next one. So, SunX Tools, uh, another one. Now, I haven't got a chance to use this, but let me tell you, when I need this, this is going to come in clutch. So, nice box. Now, these are the torque adapters. So, here it is. So, it goes 10 to 19, no skips. And uh, what I like about this is if you've ever had your ratchet and a socket on something, but you can't quite get it on the bolt. It just doesn't fit. You can put a wrench on there, but you can't put a socket. So you put a wrench on there and guess what? You can't get it off because it's too tight. Or you need to use a torque wrench and you're not gonna use an open end wrench. So what you do is you get this and you put this on. Actually, I have used these, I lied. I'll tell you. So you put this on and then you can put your ratchet out here or an extension, whatever, and then it gives you an extension from the bolt. I was doing a oil, I was doing a oil cooler and engine mounts on a Jeep, on a Jeep Cherokee. So doing the Jeep Cherokee, and uh, and I can't get to the bolts. Like the bolt on top is like way buried under. So I'm, I'm reaching all the way through with a wrench and a ratchet, and I'm trying to get it off. It's not working. So what I did was I was able to put this on there and put it on the engine mount. And then reach in there and put my ratchet on here. And then I was able to come out here and then break it loose and then lift it up. For tightening it, what I ended up doing was, and also for the lower engine mount bolts, what I ended up doing was, so the mount is here and you've got a bolt here and a bolt here going down. Well, guess what? You can't get to those bolts from up top. And from down below, all you can do is see above them. So what I ended up doing was I ended up putting uh, the adapter like this. And then I put a long extension this way. I hooked up a ratchet and I just changed direction on the ratchet so I went tighten. And then I was able to loosen the bolt and then lift it up and then loosen the bolt till I was able to go up there and unthread it by hand. And then most importantly, tighten it back down. Same thing, just boop. We're great. Uh, so these things are fantastic. Uh, didn't mean to lie about saying I hadn't used them. But uh, yeah, we're great on the Jeep. And you know what? I have to say, and I, and I talk to a lot of guys about tools. So this tool set, I believe this is under a hundred bucks. Okay, so I, I talk to a lot of guys and they say, "Man, I, I just that's just dumb. Why would you pay a hundred bucks for something that you know like that?" I mean, because we have so many tools that maybe you don't hardly ever use. Maybe you bought it two years ago, you've never used it, and then the one time that you need it, you're going to be like, "Oh my god, I have that tool and it works great." This Jeep, could I have got those engine mounts done without it? Well, yeah, obviously. Would have been a lot harder, absolutely. And it would have taken me some creativity to try to figure out how I was gonna do it. So, having stuff like this, it just makes the job easier and you get it done quicker. So that's why you invest in tools that you don't necessarily use all the time. But what does chap my hide, and all you techs out there are gonna understand this, is when you have guys that just won't spend the money on these kind of tools and then they come over to you and they go hey man uh can i borrow that uh that torque adapter i bought a socket for struts when you have a strut that goes down inside the knuckle and the knuckle open is like this and you have a bolt that goes through and it squeezes the knuckle to lock the strut in i forgot what it's called but anyways when you're trying to get that strut out the knuckle is is squeezed around it and even when you take the bolt out it's still tight so I bought a socket. Uh, Ryan Mullen on TikTok uh, showed this on, on his uh, video and I went and bought it. It is a tool and it's a socket and you put it in, you put it in the strut like this and then you turn it and it goes sideways and it opens up the knuckle and it holds the knuckle open. Slide the strut out, unbolt it, put the new one in, slide it back down, turn it with your ratchet again, it pops back in place. Uh, I haven't even used it yet. I have a, the same guy has borrowed it twice. So yeah, it kind of bugs me. And that socket only costs like 10 bucks or 15 bucks or something like that. So that is a pet peeve of mine, but I'm a nice guy. And for some reason I make a joke about them buying it. And then I just still let people borrow it. So 
Yeah. I should just be like, nope, sorry, can't borrow my tools, but I don't work at a place like that. We all let each other borrow everything, but it does bug me. So if you see this video, buy that socket. Anyways, uh, next up is uh, a, cal uh, a, a micrometer. So I hate using shop micrometers because, for one, you don't know if other people dropped it. They took care of it. Plus, I have to walk all the way to the office, so I just get my own. So anyways, I've been doing this for years. This is like my third one in a lot of years. I go to home, a Home Depot and get a Husky um, micrometer. Actually, no. I lied. The last time, I bought one at Lowe's. Forgot what brand it is. Probably Cobalt or something. So I bought one at Lowe's, and I had it for a while. It was in my box. And then I went out on disability. It was like brand new. When I came back, it was all messed up, and it just kept flashing, and the screen wouldn't work. So not buying one at Lowe's ever again. I, uh, I'll wait. Uh, so what, what I do when I buy uh, micrometers is I do, I do this. So I take it over to the grinder and I grind out a section right there. Um, and why I do that is because a lot of rotors have a lip on them. And so when I use this, it'll go around the lip and it'll, um, uh, it'll measure every once in a while you get rotors that are, um, that are so far lip that you can't, you know, you can't get your micrometer on, but Anyways, uh, it comes in a nice case. I kind of like the case. Uh, it's got like a, the old ones didn't do that. The old ones are like in a, a wooden box and I, I never kept them in it. But yeah, it's got like a foam backing on here. It's got a place to put your batteries. Uh, so pretty nice. I like it. Husky, Home Depot. I think it's like 30 bucks. It works great. Next tool. All right, now this I'm super excited about. Now, I've been using this for a while, and I'm, I'm actually compiling a video on my pros and cons on this, but this is the Top Don Phoenix Light 3. Now, the uh, I had the Phoenix Light 2. I used it for a long time. I'm a busy guy at work, and I don't have a lot of time to try things that don't work. So if I try something that doesn't work, and I try it again, and it doesn't work, I've spent 10 minutes trying something. That's 10 minutes I lost, 10 minutes I didn't have to lose. Then it happens again, and then it happens again, and then finally I just say, forget it, I'll just use something else. So my, my Phoenix Light 2, that kind of happened with me. Um, I had some stuff that was just not working on, and so I kind of got to the point where I wouldn't use it. And um, and then I would use it if I had to, but but I didn't like to use it just because of that factor. I, I don't have a place where I work and just film content. I'm a flat rate guy filming this stuff to help you guys out. But uh, anyways... So I didn't use it for a long time. And then somebody messaged me and said, hey, man, I, I, uh, uh, the Phoenix Light 3 is out. And I was looking to get one. And it's, that's what's showing is, is current. And I had no idea it was even out yet. So anyway, so I, I contacted Top Don and uh, asked him about it. And they said, oh, yeah, the Phoenix Light 3, it is uh, what's different. Well, first of all, it has a few things right off the bat. Uh, it has ADOS capability right there. Uh, you probably have to get some sort of plug-in. You've probably got to get some radars and stuff. But it has the ability to do ADOS. All one didn't. Uh, and the next thing that it has is, and I'm going to actually show a clip of, of this. It has really good topology. Let's take a look at that clip. Got a 21 Duramax here. It's in lint mode. And we're going to do a smart scan uh, with the, the Phoenix Light 3. We're still using this. Uh, things are going good. So then you can just hit diagnostic plan and okay so with that clip i just showed you like a couple different vehicles showing the topology now what i really like about the topology on that is not only does it show you a topology but it also shows you the specific topology so it shows you like the b can the the 6 and 14 can the you know whatever different cans so i showed you that in the little clips and also instead of having a little dongle just a little dongle that would plug in. It actually has a, um, and I forgot what they call these things. Um, there's a name for this. Oh, uh, MDCI. So this, it, it has an MDCI now. And so it's really cool because it shows you the, the vehicle power and it shows you the connection and it's got a long lead here. Uh, you're not gonna leave this in a car. So that's really nice. So. Talk about diagnostics. The next thing I got is, and my buddy is does any, um, he had one of these, and so I decided to invest in it. Um, so I got the little U-scope here. 
It normally it's 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 black. It comes in a little orange silicone case that I got because I got the master set. But one of the problems with the um, with the U scope is it's got a, a a little plug right here, and I don't know what it's called, but it's got a little tiny plug and and a little needle that goes through and connects. Apparently, one of the problems with the U scope is that connection eventually it, it'll fail because uh, it's so small. And so to combat that, there are people that make cases and they make adapters that come out so you don't have to disconnect this anymore. Well, so this is held together with Allen's. And now this is from uh, Derail Diagnostics, uh, LLC. Derail Diagnostics, you can find him on Instagram. He makes a lot of stuff like this. So they had a lot of different colors. They even had different colored screws. Um, so it says U scope across there. It's got all the spots for all the buttons. You can see the screen really well, and it's got the adapter. And then I buy. Uh, I don't have a Pico scope, and so I don't have. Um, I don't have. Um, uh, I forgot what the leads are called for a for a um, uh, like a like a Pico scope. Um, they're a different kind of lead. But anyways, uh, actually, it's this kind. It's that kind. I forgot what it's called. I don't use them. Uh, but what I did was I went on Amazon and I bought um, a couple of these. And so now I can put this on like that. And now I have a regular spot for my BNC leads. Uh, the only problem I have is that because I bought a master set with this uh, Pico with this uh, U-scope here. And so that has a, a, the master set came with a, an, amp, an amp clamp. It came with a, an ignition um, it came with an ignition uh, uh, clamp to clamp around a plug wire, and it came with a paddle to put on top of the ignition coils, and a couple other things. But anyways, um, the problem that I have is that all those adapters that I had, they are this style, this um, whatever this U-scope uses here. And so when I use those, I have to actually take the case apart and disconnect this and then plug in the other adapters and use it that way. So that's one problem I have. Um, I actually need to contact him and see if I can get an adapter that would adapt. And if anybody's watching this video and you know, um, one thing that would be beneficial for me is if I had a, uh, the, whatever kind of connection is in the U scope, if I could get an adapter that adapts this to that female type of, um, U scope connection. So then I can just plug in my amp clamp, my, uh, ignition clamp and all the different things that I have for ignition. So if you see this and you know uh, what I can do, please send me a link, a, a message, whatever, uh, and uh, and I'll be sure to. And, and I want to buy it. I just need I just need to know where I can get it. And uh, it says Derail Diagnostics. There's another guy um, who makes cases like this for U scopes. Um, this one I think was around thirty bucks, something like that, maybe forty. Uh, there's another one, another company makes, and they're like well over a hundred bucks. Um, I was asking him about the connection and you know all that, and he said he could make me a special a special adapter, and never got back to me, and so I didn't buy it from him. So I ended up going with uh, Derail Diagnostics. And to be honest, I probably should just reach out to him, and I bet he can come up with uh, with a lead for me because he makes leads, he makes everything. You need like special leads made, special length leads, all that stuff. I know he makes it all kinds of special stuff. So, anyways. Uh, what else did I get? I got these from Power Probe. Now I know these aren't the greatest and I know some people are gonna say you should not use those. Don't use them, throw them away. But sometimes you're just in a pickle and you need to clamp onto a wire that you just can't quite get to. And so I bought these from Power Probe. Now what I should have, now all these do is they unscrew and you got a little tiny needle and it's just gonna make contact. Now, what I know I should do and what I should have done was not buy these and invest in some Phil's probes uh, because they are the same exact principle as this except for its needles instead of like a single, a single pin that, that protrudes the wire. The Phil's probe, I believe, is, a, is like a bed of nails that goes up through there. So. And usually I use a bed of nails. I have a bed of nails lead, open it up. It's got a, a, a circle of little needles and it's got a hard spot and they clamp down together. They bite through the wire and it makes little tiny uh, 
penetrations through the insulation. So if you work in anywhere where there's rust or anything like that, you want to make sure you seal those up. So next up is a couple sets from, uh, from SunX Tools. Now, sometimes you just need a Allen or a, uh, a Torx uh, set. You don't need a socket. You just need a set. So these are SunX Tools tamper-proof long-arm magnetized key set. So this is a T10. It's got T10, 15, 20, 25, 27, 30, 40, 45, and 50. So pretty cool. It opens up like that. It's got all the sizes and right there. And they're magnetic. It folds up together. It, it, it sticks together. All nice and neat. It doesn't, they don't fall out. Every single time I've had any of these things, they fall out. So anyways, they don't fall out. These are awesome. And they're made by Sunex Tools. Uh, the next one is, is another set just like that, except for they are Allens. It's two sets of Allens. So there's the part number right there. All right. So two sets of Allens. This is um, the same principle. So now these two, they come together like this. So you can Oh, <laughs> you ever do something a bunch of times and uh, and then one time you go to do it, and you can't remember how you did it. Yeah, that's what just happened. So so this is a little hinge that holds them together. And then this is just a little uh, a little thing that goes like that. It just pops in the hole just to keep them together so you don't lose them. Uh, or you can just take them off the hinge and you have two sets. So we've got the same thing now. You're going to take one. You're going to open it up like that. And then you've got all your Allens here for your metric. And then all, I mean, that's the standard. And then the red is all your metric. Same thing, just two sets of Allens. So made by Sunex Tools, obviously. It's a good one. So that's that. Next up is, now this is my old one, but I needed a new Streamlight. My old one, um, I told you guys in another video, uh, I needed um, a battery. So I think my last tool haul video, I bought a battery. So for this one, exactly. This is my old work one. Um, I bought a battery uh, because it wasn't charging and I thought the battery was bad. So I, put, I bought a power probe. I mean, I bought a, a, um, a Streamlight battery on Amazon, an actual Streamlight battery. I put it in. Worked great until the battery was dead and then it wouldn't charge. So same problem I had before. Cool thing about this is uh, when I contacted Streamlight in the first place, they told me if you send it in, and it's not the battery, then they will they will take care of it for free. It'll all be fixed. If it is the battery, they're going to charge you for a battery. So being dumb, I decided to just buy a battery for myself. And uh, yeah, so that's not the problem. So now I got to send it in and get it fixed for free. But it is my uh, it's my home one now, and I love I love this. I can't tell you guys how much I love these 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 batteries uh, these headlamps because I have to work on a creeper a lot of times. I work on big trucks, and when I'm on a creeper this is my back of my head is on the back of my of my creeper well you have a big battery pack there so what i like about this is you can you can turn this to the side in the lace like that and now i can put my head on my creeper so i love that that's awesome streamlight check them out i've been using that uh, that headlamp for a very long time next up now this is mostly for uh for like uh i don't know detailing i think maybe spraying off carpet but this is capri tools new uh sandstorm uh um blow gun so it's got like a little a little like it does kind of like that and it kind of swirls the air it kind of just blows like uh floor mats things like that's gonna be really good at that um it's got a nice metal body and uh and again this one came with uh one of the wrong you know air fittings so that one's that the next tool, and I believe this is the last one, and this is from Sunex Tools. Now, this is their Torx set, their Torx and Allen set. So, there it is in a nice foam case. So, you've got the Allen. So, this is a 10 milli Allen right there. And you got Torx Plus. So, this is a 25 
I mean, not plus, tamper-proof torques down there. And come up here, we got 3 16 Allen. So we got Allens, we got Torx. We got regular Torx. So nice set from SunX Tools. And guess what? Lifetime warranty. You get one of your Torx that strips out. Always seems like it's the Torx. The Allens, they, they never fail. But you got that, works. You have a problem, contact them, get us in it. So, so that's the tool hole. Pretty big tool hole, kind of a weird long span of time. Uh, I got some other tools that I forgot to bring home uh, to show you guys. Nice Sunex tools, torque wrench, things like that. It's been so long and such a weird seven months for me. So anyways, thanks for hanging in there. Appreciate you guys watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Also, stay tuned as you'll see that check engine chuck load cage in action very soon and in a bunch of future videos. See you guys next time.